Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about access modifiers and specifically how the public access modifier applies to a class. I'm going to open up my browser here to javacjava.com, select menu and Java OOP Tutorials, which is my object-oriented programming tutorials page. Let's scroll down here to public class, and this is public access applied to a class. When the public access modifier is applied to a standard outer class, the following access is granted. Full access is granted to inherit the class from within the same package or from any other package. Full access is granted to create a new reference to an instance from within the same package or from any other package. A source code.java file can contain a maximum of one public class and the name of the source code file must be the name of the public class. Other default access classes can exist in the same file. It is very important to understand that applying public access to a class declaration does not set or change the access of the members and elements enclosed inside of the class. Things to think about. If you do not explicitly create a constructor for the class, a default constructor will be implicitly created with public access. Now be careful of constructors that you create. A more restrictive access applied to a constructor can cause compiler errors. Let's go ahead and come down here and we'll highlight this code here. And we'll select Control C to copy or right click and select copy. Let's move the browser off screen for a moment. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop here, but if you don't, you can create one in really quick by going new, shortcut, type in CMD, next and finish. Just that easy. Let's type in Java C, which is the Java compiler. And if you should see all this stuff scroll by, but if you don't, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. Um, you wanna make sure you get that installed and configured properly prior to continuing. Let's type in CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash, CD is short for change directory and backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory called Java. I already have it, but if you don't, it will create it for you. Change directories to the Java folder. Now this is my working directory here right now. Um, any packages that I create will be contained in corresponding directories underneath this folder. It's currently empty right now, there's nothing there, so I'm going to create make a directory called one. Now I'm going to change to the one folder. Alright. Um, and then I'm going to notepad uh, I am public.java. I am public.java is the name of our source code file, also known as our compilation unit, and it will contain a corresponding public I am public class inside of it. Okay, let's go ahead and pull that right up to there, it looks good. Okay, let's paste that stuff in there and let's save it. Here is the public class I am public, right? And then the public modifier there. And it has one simple method inside of it, display message, uh, void return type, and a public modifier there. Simply displays to the console the string literal, I am public in package one. And package one, that statement is the first statement of the source code file up here, right? And we are importing um, a package to uh, you are public class. And don't worry about this yet. We'll come back to that in a second here. Let's go ahead and pop back to the DOS prompt, type in cd, dot, cd space dot dot, and that'll get us back to our Java folder. Move this up one directory. We're going to make another directory called two for our next package. Change directories to two. And I'm going to bring my browser back over here real quick. And we will come down here to the to package. And the UR public, I uh, hit control C after we highlight that and, or copy. And there's a class UR public in there. All right. Let's um, notepad you are, uh, are public.java, right? Paste that in there, save, control. And so package two is our first statement in here, and you are public. 
Um, ignore these commented lines for now, but basically we've got an instance variable of string type message, and it just is assigned to this string literal here. You are public in package two. The display, the display message right here is the only method, and it's public as well, and it simply displays our instance variable message to the console. All right, let's go ahead and save that and come back here. Let's go cd dot dot. All right, let's type in Java C. We're going to go ahead and compile these now. One, and then we'll hit tab to pull up the I in public. We're going to go ahead and compile that there. All right. Well, I'm going to do something real quick here. It's a little off topic, but just more utility for the Java C thing there. So. I'm going to type in a dir, which is short for directory, and then forward slash s tells it to look at all the subdirectories. Okay, so what we've got now is we've got our 1 and our 2 folders, and inside of the Java 1 folder, right, we've got our impublic.java source code file, and it compiled both of those, the byte code for both of those classes, the public and the tester. Now you also notice it came down here, and since we had um, the import statement in there, it found the urpublic.java as well, and compiled that also, okay? So it, um, it'll it automatically do it. We don't have to go through and type in, you know, Java C2 slash um, urpublic.java. Now, by all means, we can if we wanted to recompile that, but just know that by compiling the, the one, the one underneath the one folder, we it'll catch them both there, okay? Let's go ahead and clear our screen there. <clears throat> all right, now we're ready to do some testing. So the first thing that we're going to test is um, a reference, creating a reference from the same package. So I am going to do an I am public, right? Object type IAP equals a new reference to an instance of the I am public object, right? And then I'm going to use that reference to invoke the display message method. And I'll display I am public in package one, right? Okay, so just demonstrating that the public class will allow full access to creating a reference, or an instance, I'm sorry, of the in, in the same package. <coughs> Let's recompile that. And now we're ready to run it, Java, and then we want to um, basically invoke the, <coughs> excuse me, want to invoke the tester class inside of the one package. So we do that by saying one dot tester. This is I am public in package one. Okay, that works out great there. Let's go ahead and comment this out and comment this line out. Now we're gonna uncomment this line out and test inheritance. So the first thing we're going to do is inherit the I am public class from the same package. And we'll test the inheritance by creating a tester, right? Um, object type, our own object type, OT equals a new reference to an instance of tester. And then we'll, since we're inheriting the display message from I am public using the extends I am public here, we'll have access directly to that through inheritance. And we'll invoke the display message. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that recompile it. What did I miss here? End of file. Oh, I forgot to uh, forgot to comment this one here. Two class declarations is not a good thing. Okay, let's go ahead and clear our screen. Okay, so that compiled fine. Okay, I am public in package one. Okay. Our inheritance within the same package is working out great too. Now I'm going to comment that, and now I'm going to inherit from the um, UR public uh, class inside of the two um, package. So the import statement says, let's import the two package .ur public class, and then just we're just going to extend the UR public. Um, class, right? So this is a subclass, this is the superclass. So we'll inherit all the methods from URPublic. 
Now I just I called the uh, the method the same display message over here, and let's take just a quick look at that, right? So we'll inherit this display message now, which will just display um, the value of message to the console, which should display you are public in package two. All right, let me just make sure I save this. Let's come back down here, hit the up arrow twice to recompile, and the down arrow to run it. You are public in package two. Okay, that looks good. So we just tested inheritance um, in a different package, and that worked out great. Okay, let's go ahead and come back down here. Comment this out, comment that out. Now we want to test a reference um, from a different package. So, because we're importing it up here, we can simply say you are public, which is the you are public object type, right? And or data type, and then yap equals a new reference to an instance of the you are public object, right? And then we will be able to invoke the display message by via reference, right? Okay, let's go ahead and come up here and save this. Run it. You are public in package two. All right. Um, so I'm bring it back over the website real quick here and just kind of go over a few things from the very top. So we have just tested um, full access is granted to inherit the class from within the same package or from the other package. So we have tested the inheritance from the same package and I tested the inheritance from another package. Full access is granted to create a new reference to an instance from within the same package or from any other package. So yeah, we tested creating a reference to an instance from the same package and from another package. We also um, note, uh, we also created a source code file with one public class and the name of that source code file matched the name of the public class. And I did include another default access level class inside of the same file. Um, now let's come back here to things to think about. If you do not explicitly create a constructor for the class, a default constructor will be implicitly created with public access. So one of the things, let's come back here to um, you are public. Uh, hold on, let me just get that off screen here, right? So on this line right here, right, there is a default public no argument constructor right here. That just is put in there implicitly. All right. Last thing to talk about here is, is this line right here. Be careful of constructors that you create. A more restrictive access applied to a constructor can cause compiler errors. All right, so let's say we want to expand on the UR public class and we want someone to be able to pass a parameter to our constructor to change this default message. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this out because we're about to get rid of our default no argument and we'll put in this constructor right here. So the constructor will take a parameter string message. It'll um, call the super statement here and then it will um, assign the parameter value message to the instance variable message up here using the this dot. And we of course have to create our default no argument constructor there too as well. So we go ahead and save this, right? And then we come back to I am, uh, to I am public, right? Let's go ahead and clear our screen. We want to compile this one right here. Now all of a sudden we get an error. Constructor, you are public, and class you are public cannot be applied to given types, right? And that's a little cryptic, but basically what happened is, is that if we come back here, our class is public, but our constructors are have no modifier, so they are in fact default level. So we cannot create um, we can, this, there's no problem here, right? It's when we go to create the new object and then we go to invoke its constructor right here that we run into the problem there because um, default access is only like a package level access and this UR public is outside of the package. So that's what's going on right there. We, we uh, uh, 
this is essentially by default assigned to more restrictive access. So how do we fix this? We have to change both of these to public, right? Let's go ahead and come back here, recompile that, and now everything's cool. We can go ahead and run this again, right? We're still, you are public and packaged too. Now that we got all that fixed, we can come over here to the, uh, to the constructor, and we can now uh, pass it in the, the parameter for the overloaded constructor. And I'm just going to go, uh, I ran the overloaded Well, if I could type today. All right, let's go ahead and save this. Oh, uh, I'll recompile it. And now we'll run it. So we get displayed to the console. I ran the overloaded constructor. This stuff makes sense now. All right. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, close out of that, close out of that, leave you with some final thoughts on this here. So, it's very important to understand that applying public access to class to a class declaration does not set or change the access members and elements of the enclosed inside of the class. That's really a common mis misconception that it does. Anyway, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.